My father made the choice and he was an Imam himself and still is. He made the choice to come to Australia because it was a non-Muslim country. Now if we knew that after 30 years we're going to have burqas running around and mosques being erected in every corner and people proposing Sharia law against democracy in this country, we wouldn't have come. I believe that the entire religion needs a review. I believe that there are certain books that need to be banned from this country. There are books that are regarded the second book after the Quran. And all mainstream Muslims believe in this book, the Bukhari, a very famous book. It's present in at least the majority of Muslim homes, at least. It's everywhere. It's put on the shelf right beside the Quran. And every act of terrorism is taught from that book. And that book is widely available and sold and published in Australia. I don't understand how Muslims believe that, well, radical Muslims is, is the main issue here. How they believe that if you blow yourself up, you go have lunch with the Prophet Muhammad in heaven. I didn't know my Prophet was running a restaurant up there. I honestly never knew. And then you have other very attractive statements that they state that you go and you get 72 virgins. But what kind of a virgin is she that I would have to blow myself up for her? And I also oppose the construction of mosques. We have a big problem. Changing this country is something I am against. You can have one mosque in Adelaide, which is the oldest mosque. And then you can have centers. You can have educational centers. You can rent out university theaters, community centers. There's no need to be building mosques that later on are led by radical Muslim leaders. Some of them don't find success in radicalizing the youth that come to the mosque to worship God. So what do they do? They ride their cars, they drive their cars with their boats from Western Australia, as you may have heard, all the way to Queensland because they want to join ISIS through Malaysia. And I've always called on to ASIO to check the bank accounts of Muslim Imams and who's funding them. And do these people that fund them, do they have expectations from them? to brainwash these children? What's going on with genital mutilation and child brides and what's happening in this country? Now I know there are some politicians in recent times that have stood up and they're, they're very against Islam. And they want to tell people that Islam is a very dangerous religion. Why do they say that? Now, I don't oppose these politicians because I know exactly what filth is in my religion. I know exactly what's going on, which is why I don't speak out against them. I'm against generalizing because there are good Muslims. But the main message behind it, I agree with. But this will get me in trouble. I've never said this before. But Palestine is Jewish land. I mean, come on, who doesn't know this? Jesus came to Jerusalem. He came to the Israelites who were there. It's Jewish land. It's about time the female politicians Stop dressing in headscarves when they go to Muslim countries. I know it's good to respect other people. But if you're the foreign minister, you're a foreign minister with your uniform and your badge. And if they don't respect you as a woman to come and dress in what you like to dress, then that's a country we don't want their embassy, we don't want anything to do with them if they don't respect our foreign minister, regardless of what country that is. Look, this is Australia. This is what it is. You like it, like it, don't like it. We'll give you one of our kangaroos and you can hop back to where you came from. The Grand Mufti, who's elected to be representing us for 20 years, hasn't come out and said in English that I condemn terrorism. It's true that he endorses verdicts against ISIS. But the problem is, Australia needs to stand against ISIS.
The Muslim community here needs a verdict against ISIS. Not someone in America, and you're giving them the thumbs up, good on you. No, we need to take a stand against ISIS because we are worthy of that. We deserve a Muslim community that takes a stand against terrorism because that's the fine line between hypocrisy and not. If you're not a hypocrite, then speak out. How do you reform a current ideology? Number one, government needs to realize that the books that are being taught in Muslim schools and that are in the shelves of mosques need to be taken out, opened up, see the publisher and post it back to where they came from. Simple as that. We don't need to burn anything. We don't need to create tension. Just gather the books and thank you very much. That's number one. Secondly, secret services need to monitor the movements of every religious leader. The lectures, if they're in Arabic, what are they saying? The examples they use, do they have private lessons, money in the bank accounts, how many wives do they have? This is very important. Many people don't realize this. Muslims have more than one wife in this country. But we need to come to one common understanding that it's either we follow the law of the land or we don't. If we do, then it's one wife. If we don't, then go back to where you came from and have as many wives as you like. In Australia, where there's freedom of speech and where there's democracy, many Muslims do not find it safe to speak out against extremism in their country. At all. And when I say they're afraid, they're not afraid of isolation, they're afraid of death. And I've been very close to that. And God saved me many times.